We're joined on the line by Yael Eckstein, president and CEO of the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. Yael Eckstein, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for your time. So let's talk about the situation on the ground in Israel right now. The war, obviously, in Gaza continues. You still have a bunch of displaced people up in the north because of Hezbollah's threats up in the north. How is the war progressing? Well, I think that everyone in Israel is feeling it. Just today, I got news that my friend's son was killed. And every day we're hearing more and more about our loved ones, our friends who are affected by the war in the most personal way. I just met a woman last week who saw her husband get killed. Her son is kidnapped and she's a displaced woman, has nowhere to go home to. So the fellowship is helping people like her. There are hundreds of thousands of them. And it's this war is affecting everyone in a personal way. I don't know any other country who sends their uh, husbands and children and loved ones to the war zone in order to protect their homes and is alone for months on end without any support. You know, what's what's truly amazing is how the international community has quickly swiveled in order to chide Israel for being too harsh on the terrorists. Obviously, the reason that soldiers are dying in the Gaza Strip, as opposed to Israel just using its complete air superiority, is because Israel wishes to minimize civilian casualties. And Israeli citizens are dying because of that. Families are being left without fathers and sons because of precisely this issue. Yeah, I think that is very clear. Hamas has invested in training their kids to be martyrs, while Israel has invested their next generation in academics and education and striving for peace. And so you see Israel is protecting their citizens and Hamas is using human shields. It doesn't take much, Ben, to see what the problem in the world is. It goes back to the oldest story in the book of anti-Semitism. You don't need to Google anti-Semitism anymore to learn about something from the past. You can see it on the streets and every single city. Um, the chance of never again have transformed overnight into from the river to the sea and intifada now. But what's inspiring to me here in Israel to see is that this isn't 1938. Today, we have 700 million Christians around the world who wake up every morning with the moral compass to support and love Israel. And their answer to the growing hatred of the Jewish people is to spread love. And so what I get to see through the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews is that they're not just feeling sorry for us. They're giving through the fellowship to invest in saving lives of the Jewish people to make sure they live. So Holocaust survivors have food, the displaced have homes, there's bulletproof vests and bomb shelters that are being placed because for the first time maybe in history, we have hundreds of millions of Christians who not only pray, but are acting to protect the Jewish people. So why don't you talk a little bit more about some of the things that IFCJ has been doing on the ground to help people and how people can help you? Well, from the first day of October 7th, we were on the ground providing food, bulletproof vests, everything that we've seen since then from the need of bulletproof ambulances we've been providing. This uh, Sunday actually marks 100 days since October 7th. And so I think everyone who cares about Israel should be asking themselves, what are they going to do on day 100 to pledge their continued support for Israel and not to forget the victims? Um, I recently met a family in Jerusalem. They were poor before the war broke out, and now their husband for three months has been in Miluim, in reserve duty, and they don't have food in their pantry. He came home from reserve duty. He was poor before, and now they have nothing. So the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews is looking for all of these forgotten populations, and we're bringing food to the hungry, the Holocaust survivors who are still in Sterot now. There are 500 elderly in that evacuated Gaza border city who said, we'd rather die in our homes than live as evacuees at the age of 85, 90 years old. So we're bringing food every day to these Holocaust survivors who have decided to stay in the evacuated cities. They have rocket attacks. There's no infrastructure there, but they're uh, living out their final days, and they're living it out with Christians and Jews around the world who are showing through their acts of sacrificial giving. You know, Ben, we're not getting million dollar donations. We're getting $25 donations for a food box. And that's making all of the difference between especially these Holocaust survivors, but everyone in Israel recognizing the difference between 1938 and 2024. Today, we have friends. So, Yael, why don't you tell people how they can help? Well, 
anything that you can do in order to be part of this larger community of Christians and Jews coming together to comfort the Jewish people, providing food, providing heating, providing shelter, um, any amount helps. You can go to www.ifcj.org and join the hundreds of thousands of others who have come together to bless Israel and the Jewish people. And to follow what we're doing on the ground every day, you can go to my social media pages, Yael Eckstein, where I give constant updates of how those donations are making a difference. That's Yael Eckstein, President and CEO of the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. Really appreciate your time and thanks for what you're doing on the ground over there. Thank you so much, Ben. God bless you.